talk about like the worst love story I've ever seen. Johnny Cash is trash. Okay, I have so much to say about this movie. I love watching movies like this because they make me realize why so many women think that uh, what that love is being a man's angel, his rock, and literally everything but his partner. And Walk the Line is no different. This is literally Beauty and the Beast. Instead of this beast uh, having uh, a mansion, he's a little hobo with talent. And every person in that man's life is made harder because of him. But why he's just brilliant genius and this story is sick it's sick let's get into just how messed up this story is and then it's actually even more messed up in real life so i'm going to show you some more stuff that the movie leaves out like a lot of stories uh this terrible man had a lot of daddy issues his dad uh was a drunk spent the family's money and was a complete prick even wanted to sell the family's piano so he could keep drinking on Sunday and probably every, every other day. Now, Johnny Cash must have gotten it uh, honest. I'm not sure how true the dad backstory is. Uh, apparently they exaggerated it a little bit for the movie because he got to turn up the drama. But if his mom is really like this, I guess he learned that a woman is supposed to uh, not respect her husband, um, literally have to parent him, make sure he doesn't blow the family's finances on all of his vices, like most of our grandmas, she was a hostage because women couldn't have like credit and all kinds of stuff. So um, your grandpa probably had her hostage. And uh, thank you, Candace Kelly, for bringing that conversation the attention it needs. Go follow her if you're not already. The backstory that's going to justify all of Johnny Cash's terrible treatment of women, other than his dad being a prick, an abusive prick, is uh, his brother. The good one. This was like written, written way too on the nose. He literally start off, you're the good one. You're the good one. As a writer, there's nothing I hate more than the, the writers treating the audience like we're dumb. But anyway, so the brother gets a, a saw in his <laughs> chest or whatever and it, and it unalived. And this tragedy is going to justify all of Johnny's behavior. Poor Johnny. Poor, poor Johnny. Nothing can compete with that victim narrative. I'm not saying that wasn't traumatizing. Sounds like he had a very difficult childhood. Being poor, alcoholic, mean dad, and brother gets like sliced in half or whatever. Just saying, men's traumas are always going to get way more empathy. It means justifying their, their hero's journey. Despite all the things that, that those men do to women. Like this poor woman. I'm just going to call her the wife. To reiterate, she's the wife not june anyway she marries this dude after i mean he meets her i think when she's a teenager he won't leave her alone they send letters back and forth while he's you know doing military crap and you know shocker a man with a lot of childhood trauma goes to the military and comes back and ends up abusive and an addict we've definitely never seen that before when um daddy uncle sam whatever just the men and then the men go to all the women in their life and their children anyway uh she loves this man so much and this movie makes her seem awful so awful that she refused to watch this movie and it pissed off her kids but that's where well, i'm gonna get to that later she's just a nag and we everybody june is the one he's meant to be with literally this man didn't deserve either of these women I'm just gonna say that, say that right out of the gate, but I'll tell you why as we go along. And every single red flag you can ever find in a man, Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash Adam, do not fall for these tragic artist, complicated men. They will ruin your life. So, you know, I'm not sure how true to life this is, but they've, they it makes it come across like she was just like a naysayer, just a Debbie Downer believe in his dreams and his talent so she's all like can you please try to sell stuff i need to feed the baby because i noticed in your little case that uh you're not you just got peanuts and crap what are you doing what are you doing bring home some bacon she's all like oh. she's like i really need you to uh think about what my dad offered basically like bro you're not bringing home any money my dad has offered to help out, get you a job, because uh, this isn't going to work for me. I'm, like, ah, I'm trying. She's like, try harder, please. <laughs> but their 
setting up here is that this woman is the thing standing between him and success. This would be, I don't know, Skylar uh, White. The king baby needs to make his meh, because that's his talent. And Skylar's standing in the way. How dare her try to feed her family? Well, guess what? He's the danger. He's the danger. And she's the only thing protecting this family. But, you know, it, it, but she's a nag. She's a nag. He doesn't believe in him. But here's this scene. He's got his little band over. And his wife is inside just kind of a little annoyed. Only time this man is home, he's playing music and probably not parenting their children. So, you know, little Debbie Downer here is not too stoked. And she's not really hiding it like she's supposed to. She runs to the bathroom to try to, you know, hide it. And he's like, Burr, open the door. Embarrassing me. This is where his little violent st side starts showing. Real early. Real early. For some reason, we're supposed to just love this man <laughs> up till the end. Reminds me of Beauty and the Beast when he threw a table at Belle. No biggie. It's a love story. She's over it. She's like, oh, I'm tired of being poor. I want to talk to my dad. This isn't working. I want to go home. Because remember, up until not too long ago, you could only have financial security for your dad or your husband. I don't know. There seems to be something about money and choices and security they go hand in hand but she's either got to rely on this little hobo who can sing or her dad and she's leaning towards dad she's got these kids to feed and she's just not believing in this, these mechanics and john and also they have a baby on the way and they can't even pay rent she's like bruh i got an eviction notice do something so really, we should be thankful to her for putting a little fire under little hobo's butt to get him to, you know, do more than just drink and, like, play music and dream about being famous. Still, the way it's framed, the way he thinks of her, she's just a nag who doesn't really believe in him. It's a rare occasion this man is ever home and he's not flirting with June and forking other women on the road because he's doing that. She's like, uh, when he finally comes home, she's like, hey, um, I thought you were actually gonna help me. And this is back when, you know, helping is all men were expected to do at the most. Now we're like, no, you're gonna parent, not help or babysit. She's like, hey, 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 you're finally home. Be a part of this family. Can you actually live life with us when you're home instead of i don't even know what he's doing but he's definitely not wanting to be there probably drinking probably drinking just like his daddy and she and he's all like i love seeing your face when i wake up like <laughs> nice try buddy by the way all these letters we're getting from women they bother me like don't read those silly letters even though i'm literally forking all these women on the road <laughs> why you gotta get up so upset just stop reading the letters <laughs> He starts talking about what it's like on the road. All these women are just running and screaming and they just, you know, and she's like, why are you telling me this? i tell you why he's telling you this. And love to deny doing anything while also keeping you on your toes, trying to get you to shut up and all your stupid nagging because all these women would be easy to hook up with. But they're not. But they could, in case you didn't know. You see this? Men do this all the time. Don't make me cheat! So, shh, shh, Debbie Downer. Like, can you just stop? We've got casserole in the oven, family in the kitchen, and I don't want to talk about your dumb tour. Any woman who's dated a uh, musician knows this feeling. So after his wife sets a boundary, like, I don't want to hear about your tour anymore. When you're home, you're home. You're gone basically all the time, and I just don't want to talk about it. And any, any woman who has ever dated a musician has probably seen way too many of his shows has spent way too much money traveling to his show and literally is, is, is so immersed in this music world that they literally like, please, please, can you please talk about anything but this? So that's relatable. That's a good rule. And what does he say? I got a ruse. Ha, okay. You literally live on the road and fork other women and do wrongs and try to hook up with June and just hang out with your bros all the time. That's all you got is rule? Okay. This is how men will convince, try to convince us that we're just controlling little workers. You're so controlling. When they are the controlling ones. They control us with money, their addiction, their cheating, their all their stuff. And this poor woman is miserable. And he's like, no more rules. It's just too many rules. And he's like, I got his rules. 
I gotta be at this place at this time. You know what that's called? A job. Everybody's got rules because we all have to go to work and show up when they tell us to, not just when we feel like it. Unless you're a freelancer, and sometimes that's worse because you gotta be your own boss. And if you got ADHD and a little problem concentrating, get easily distracted by things like this, then sometimes you wish you had rules. It's 11.45 at night and I should not be doing this. You know what I mean? Uh, so shut up, Johnny. You gotta try to go there and get back here. Ah, oh, life's hard. And I gotta spend time with you and the kids. All these rules, I can't take any more rules. Like being expected to show up for my family every once in a while. And now I can't talk about my tour. Fork you, wife, nag. Like this dude, I hate you already. I hate him already. And this is like 15 minutes into the movie. I gotta write songs, even though I'm literally living my dream. They make me write songs <laughs> and perform them. Rules, 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 everywhere rules, not you too. And he does this. I mean, what do you want from me? I actually love you? <sighs> little gold digger, I got you a car, a little dream house, and all your things. What do you want from me? I want you, John. I want you. And all the stuff you promised me. Because right now you're just a little liar. A little liar, liar, pants on fire. What if I can't do that? <laughs> you should have left him right there. He's basically like, Burt, shut up. I got you all this stuff. You don't want to play by my rules? I'll just go fork that June lady. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. This lady. Now, I, we're supposed to root for her. Although, I'm not sure if I believe she was this one. Okay, I'm going to get into it later on. According to Johnny Cash's first wife, this woman was uh, really the pursuer, not the, no, no, we shouldn't. So I'm just gonna show it how it's told in this movie. And we, you can, and then how the, the wife in real life said it happened, and then we can decide on our own. But um, what I do know is that she knew he's married all along. Now I will say that a lot of men are very, very sneaky, and they lie, and they, you know, do all kinds of things uh, to cheat on their wives. Don't tell the women that they're seducing that they're married until they've already got them. But June, June, you knew. And you just kept hanging out with Johnny, enabling Johnny, taking care of Johnny like his mom. Please don't be this woman. Don't be either of these women. And I'm gonna tell you why the first wife, but definitely don't be this woman. This is where being a pick me will literally ruin your life. Even though it makes it sound like they just had the most beautiful marriage ever. Uh, it doesn't really sound like it. At least two are like, Hanging out in coffee shops and talking and performing together, blah, blah, blah. And at one point he tries to kiss her. She's like, what? No, no. I got a world of judgment on me right now. I went through a terrible divorce, very public. And because of the time, she's judged by a divorce. Motley man. You seem like you have a nice family. So let's not mess that, mess that up, okay? She knows, uh, according to this movie, that getting involved with a married man after going through a public divorce is not a good look for her. But in the end, it doesn't really deter her either. Johnny doesn't take no easily because that's the foundation of grape culture and men who feel entitled to things. So he take, he's like singing with her. Like, hey, hey, let's sing that song, Big Room. He's like, ha, ha, ha. I mean, in front of a whole audience, it's like, ha, how about a different song? Ha, ha, ha. I recorded that with my ex-husband. This seems inappropriate. Like, no, let's do it. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Sing the song, June. Stop being so silly. Dude literally won't let up. And he does this in front of all these people, which is a huge red flag. Any men who pressure you to do it, they want in general is a red flag, but especially with a whole audience. Like she can't not do it without looking like a Debbie Downer. I don't like that term Debbie Downer. I prefer Debbie, um, Derek Downer, but I'm just using it because that's what they call women who won't go along with men's terrible, terrible ideas. So she goes along with it and then he guesses her. She's like, nah. Do that. Now, it seems like June here is pretty good at setting boundaries. Seems like a woman who respects herself. But I don't know if she grew up with an alcoholic family or what, why, but she is pretty far on the codependency spectrum. Even though she maybe, you know, give it to him, stand up for herself. Well, we'll see. He runs backstage and is really upset because this man not only made her do a song she didn't want to do, she gave into it, but she really didn't have a choice because he put her in that position. But then he tried to kiss her. He's also go gonna look bad for her, not him. And he comes in the dressing room, he's like, what? What? What'd I do? I don't get it. 
Liar, you know exactly what you did. This man does nothing but gaslight every woman in his life. Lie and like Darvo all the time. Dude, it's a song. Why do you gotta be so dramatic? Have we heard that before? Like, just please get away from me. He does. And you know, because this is what men do, rather than sit with what just happened and maybe contemplate, how could I do better? He's like, you know, screw that. And he goes into a violent, like alcoholic rage destroys the room, literally pulls the sink out of the wall, drinks a little more, pops some pills, and then, yeah, just does his thing. That's how he handles stuff. Sorry for himself. Oh, I can't believe she got mad at me for doing so many inappropriate things. But then they have another scene. They've, he's at a toy store buying a dollhouse or something. Whatever. I don't even believe this is real. If he actually cared about his daughters and was actually buying them toys, it was just the same way a lot of men will be completely absent from their kids' lives and then show up with all his presents. Right? Like, cool, now you make mom look bad and you win them over with toys. She, and June's just like, wow, what a, what a sweet guy. They bond over their children, even though he pretty much hates his. And they go fishing. June, what are you doing? June, what are you doing? See, this she's guilty here. He goes fishing and he's all like holding the pole and all that stuff. It's like dirty dancing, but with a fish fishing rod. Anyway, this dude is such a loser. He just gets drunk all the time. He's threatening her job security because when you have um, an alcoholic who's spiraling out of control, who has a serious uh, affliction, but he's not really dealing with it, everybody in his world has to deal with the consequences. So the whole band, and including her, he's like, she, so she shows up and she's like, he's like, how are you doing? She's like, hmm, yeah, I guess you're still doing your thing, partying, bye. And then like the mother that this man and the whole band makes her be, she's like, tick tock, we gotta show it too. But then the band gets behind him. Come on, Gene, just sit down. Any woman, I know this, I've, I've been in these worlds where I'm working with all men. Whenever a woman comes in, is like, hey, we need to do something, they're like, oh, good. But they count on her to do that. They're expecting her to come in and be like, tick tock, because they don't want to have to do that. They don't want to look bad. So they literally are counting on us being a nag so that they don't have to look bad. That's why I hate working with all men and I'm the only woman because they make us be the naggy little mom. And even when we don't want to be, she's like, you're drunk. Mom, do you have a beer now? No, and I'm not going to after the show either. I'm not here to look after y'all. I'm not going to be your little mom. You're not? No, you have something to do that for you, John. Little wife, remember her? What if I didn't? Too many ifs and that. Like, don't even engage with these men. Don't even engage with, you can't win with these dudes. Only one, it, like this conversation doesn't even make sense. Who cares about these it? He's all like, haha, I really got her guys. <laughs> she comes back and throws a bottle at them. And now she looks crazy. Any man that makes you look crazy like this, it's like there's so many red flags already. And she's still just like, dang, you see, it looks like she's uh, standing up for herself. And she's trying to, how dare you talk to me like that? I must have been crazy. You guys are gonna blow this tour. Now look, they're all hiding from her. Just like she's the mom, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But her, her financial security is literally threatened by these idiots. Can't walk no line. We ain't blowing the tour, but gaslight, gaslight, deflect, I'm not gonna be that little Dutch boy with the that, that, that. this metaphor. Because that's exactly what you become, dude. The fixer. You know, before I move on from this finger in the damn thing, that's all this man did was look for a woman who would put the finger in his damn. Because this man could not manage on his own. He always needed a woman to take care of him. Before I like really bash this man, I have a lot of empathy for anyone with an addiction. I have struggled with my own and worked very, very hard to treat them. It's an illness and it is not, no one's fault that they have a chronic addiction. But why I talk about this so much is that when women date men who are addicts or marry men who are addicts, these men will, the, the consequences of his addiction will always fall on her more. The same cannot be said necessarily w under patriarchy when in, in, in these heterosexual relationships, the men don't suffer all the consequences because women are the shock absorbers of all of men's crap, financially, physically, with the children, the social stigma, all of it will fall on her. Women are judged for all of men's behavior. If they relapse, her fault. Now she may get credit for getting him uh, sober. A lot of times women are really working harder to keep men sober than men would ever do for themselves. But in the end, none of that credit for saving a man ever. Ugh. 
pays off or is worth all of the trauma that they will put you through. And the more that women enable, men in general, but especially men with serious addictions, the more in danger those women are and, and their family, but also those men are a bigger menace to society because they will never get help as long as they have someone behind them to just sweep up their mess. Or as, uh, as Anthony always uses the, the curling metaphor, just <laughs> clean it up, you know, just so these men can just slide through life so easy compared to having to actually face all the consequences, the natural consequences of their behavior. Why would they need to when a woman is always there to solve their problem? Back to this scene, it doesn't make any sense. He's like, you be lying to yourself, you think it's about a tour, honey. There he is talking to her that way again. It wasn't about a tour, blah, blah, blah. like whatever. Like, don't even engage with men when they're this wasted, especially not a group of them, because that man is gonna is humiliating her in front of all his little his little friends, and he's gonna go running back to her and expect her to forgive him. Anyway, there's a lot of back. I'm not gonna break down every scene in this movie. I just I don't have the patience, honestly. Blah blah blah. She ends up marrying some other dude, her second marriage, and then he's all playing house with his little kids and getting all that social capital. Now again, after I do this review. I'm going to actually give you more details that are so much more shocking and terrifying about this story that they just conveniently left out. This story alone, this movie alone is like a nightmare to me. The details of this story in real life are so much worse. I gotta learn how to play this. Also a scene in this movie where they're like in bed after he like follows her up into her hotel room. First time they sleep together. Uh, allegedly. And they're laying in bed and he's like, here, try, try this little thing. She's all like, uh. And he's like, just cut it. She's like, you're mean. You're a mean man, John O'Connor. Like, there's multiple times in this movie where she's like, I was crazy for thinking blah, blah, blah. You're a mean man. I knew it. It's like, June, <laughs> how many times do you have, like, you, do you listen to yourself? This man tells you that he's a terrible person. You tell you he's a terrible person. Or you just keep going. Just keep going. Any time men are like playing with you and being mean for fun because they're just kidding, even if it's as dumb as this, just to kind of like watch you get mad, red flag. Anyway, later on, she runs into Johnny at this thing where he's with his beautiful wife who's giving him all these kids and taking care of all the kids. And he's like, dude, hi, dude. Shamelessly, is like, hey, how'd you get murdered? And his wife's like, oh, God. And she like leaves because it's like, whatever, she's a little upset. He chases after her. Wife's pissed. And then they have a little back and forth. Back and forth. She's like, well, marriage didn't end up that day. And he's like, well, well, good. <laughs> and then this crap. Look at this. I don't believe this problem, This conversation ever happened. He gives her a little pep talk. You've got a voice, Jude. You, you know. I, how much you want to bet she was the one doing this for him all the time. Having to build up his precious little ego. You know, because we know she does it a lot already. But like, I don't even buy that he was like, like, this is like, this is why I think this is not even true. This man is so selfish that I don't believe that he even like could see outside of himself long enough to think maybe she needs someone to push her, someone to believe in her, someone who will uh, support her, to encourage her. This man's a terrible partner. You really think he gave her this speech? I don't buy it. Maybe he did, whatever. Anyway, he's like, meet my family. Cause that's appropriate. Introduce a little side dish to the family and the children. That's cool, Johnny. He's like, oh, look at you girls in your little dress. And wife's like, stay, good, stay away from my kid. She's like, excuse me. She's like, you heard me. And this is classic right here. Anytime you ever find yourself fighting with another woman over a man, chances are the two of you hate each other because he sucks. Now, I'm not saying that June didn't do anything wrong. I keep hearing conflicting stories, but she was convinced that this woman is a homewrecker and that Johnny really loved her. And if it wasn't for June, they would have been happy, happy, happy. Well, I doubt that. Both of them's lives would have been so much better if they both realized this man's trash. He's literally going to ruin my life. But instead, we got two women fighting over a man. A man who treats them terribly. This, this movie makes it seem like this is like such a beautiful love story, but we haven't even gotten into how awful Johnny is. So, you know, if right out of the gate you were dealing with this, a man who keeps using too many substances and you're having to go in there and take care of him and y'all aren't even married and he's already got a wife and you're doing this, you're doing too much. Run! He's like, tell me you don't love me. She's like, I don't love you. You know, when these men try to make you go away, listen to them. 
Like she's dealing constantly with managing this man's addiction. June, you're not a sponsor. Even a sponsor wouldn't do this. This man needed um, some help, a therapist, a sponsor. Uh, I don't know, someone, something, something. Instead, he has all these, he turns these women into his mother and his little personal security guard to protect him from himself and then hates her for protecting him from himself. Where's my pills? I flushed them down a toilet. Like, don't do this. If you are having to police a man and hide stuff from him, that man's gonna hate you. He will not appreciate you. All the things you, you do that you sacrifice for a man, all the stuff you put up with, all the stuff you endure, he respects you less and less over time, not more. Even if he stays with you until you die, that doesn't mean he's a good partner. It means he knows he can't live without you because he's afraid of himself. Wait, dude ends up in jail where he kind of belongs. And he comes home to his wife and she's like so sick of this crap. And he's like, hey honey, trying to kiss her. Like, <sighs> then he goes and sees his daughter. This, this is supposed to be kind of like cute. You know, oh, he loves his kid. Like, daddy, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Looks like the Joker here. Dude doesn't even see his kid tries to help make a sandwich. His wife is like, she doesn't like mustard. Hello, you'd know that if you were ever here. And because he's an addict and addicts lie. He was like, hey, you know, the pills, they were legal, okay? Supposed to buy blah, blah, blah. Don't like, if it, that, you know, there's a saying, if an addict is, is like running their mouth and they're lying or opening their mouth, this is what they do. And they are not ready to, to quit. They'll just lie, 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 lie. And she's like, really? Is the TV lying? The lawyer's lying? What about June? You know her new boy's a drug addict? <laughs> I can answer that for you. Yes, she does. And she doesn't seem concerned because like all most women under patriarchy, we're just, you know, if we're just good enough, we can fix the beast. If we just put a yellow dress on and make friends with inanimate objects in a castle, everything will be fine. This man has the audacity after all this go and hang up pictures of the woman he's cheating on her with in his little office. And she's just like, bro, I put up with so much crap from you. The least you could do is show me a little bit of respect and not hang the side chick's photo here in the house. Like, that's my limit. And she begs him and he's like, nah, I'm not that guy that. So she takes the photo, runs out of the house. Go that back. Give me that picture back. Your competition. And then you get in a physical altercation. I think you're perfect, huh? And then the children come out and see this. Daddy's little secret isn't a secret anymore. He goes outside in his pool and pouts. She takes off with the kids in the car. He's like, no, yeah, as if he's gonna raise them. Ha <laughs> ha, right. So after he runs after the girls he never parents or sees and doesn't seem to care at all about, is pissed. How dare their mother, who you were just probably about to choke or whatever. How dare her take them away from you? And you know what pisses me off about this movie? It's like, why are you showing this scene? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like happy that she took those kids. I know it's all for drama. Their attempts to make this man seem like he gave a crap about his kids really crack me up because he actually only gave a crap about his son. But more on that soon because he did the ultimate Mm, to his daughter and I'll never forgive him for that either anyway so that later on you know he's another he's always in this like hitting a bottom bottom after bottom singing with this, this hippie dude and he's like my, my woman won't return my call now we don't even know if he's talking about his wife <laughs> or June but we know that Johnny Cash can't be alone he needs a woman in his life to manage his addictions so then he goes to this bank he's like I need to talk to my woman I'm in love with the woman. Don't you understand? Look at this woman. A yet another woman who has to deal with this man. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry, sir. I can't really help you. Because he's trying to cash a check so he can go see his affair partner. And she says, no. But Johnny doesn't like no. Because he's got some uh, grapey energy. And he's like, fine. And he like trips up the check. He's just a little baby. I want my check now. Let's see my mistress. So he sh shows up at June's house. Oh, hey! Looking like this, all strung out. Go get your man, June. Is this what you want? You keep messing with him even though he's showing you who he is. Uh, and let your kids see this loser too. He's like, I walked here from Nashville. And she's like, you walked here from Nashville? And instead of just being like, yeah, I didn't have any money. He's like, you see, I'm trying to get into shape. Lie. Cleans out your system. Lie. I'm on a love walk. Don't believe this crap. 
don't don't ever believe the, the romantic crap like this and she's all like please stop messing with my career <laughs> okay um uh, this is gaslighting love's more important than a tour it's like before when he was like it's just a song i just kissed you during a song that you used to sing with your husband this man does nothing but gaslight the women in his life we all know this we all know this these men who do this not saying men are the only one to do this never ever ever am i saying that this is just classic king baby here he's like well then you gotta start loving your respect your sad. see this is the thing women cannot make men love themselves it doesn't matter what we do nothing we do will make them love themselves and as long as they are on a suicide mission they are not only going to hurt themselves they're going to bring us down with them if you really want them to have a shot at loving themselves leave them alone but yep codependent pick me cool girls we can't do that we can't do that until we work on ourselves she just wants to go back to work so then he has this fancy house He's still doing the wrong. Still bugging her. Hi. Hi, June. Right, because his wife doesn't want anything to do with him. So he's like, June, hi. She's like, you taking those pills still? And again, the message of this movie is if you just find the right woman, she will make sure that you don't self-destruct. And I hate this message because June is not going to get this man so, but that's kind of how they're framing it. And it sucks. And of course, he's like, no, I'm not taking pills. He literally just took pills. <laughs> he literally just bought a whole bag from that dude with the porn stash. Like, nope, nope, just that was a rough pack. Just like it always is. Liar. Then they talk about Thanksgiving. You alone on Thanksgiving? Well, you should be. And somehow, his parents end up at his place for Thanksgiving, I think. And of course, just so that we can give Johnny Cash a reason to be so awful, they make the dad be like, yeah, you taking care of that tractor? Like you took care of everything? Again, I've read sources that say that they really like dialed this up, that they, that they didn't hate this, the, each other this much. Because you gotta make Johnny Cash look like he has a reason to be such a selfish prick. Then June shows up. Why? June! Don't you know not to believe this man? So at dinner, he's like, so what do you think of my house, daddy? I need your approval, daddy! Now, this is actually what so many men's problems are. Because they won't deal with their issues they have with dad, feeling rejected by and hated by their own father, they're constantly trying to prove to daddy that they actually are a, are a big boy. The problem is you hinge your self-worth on what someone else thinks, which is another form of codependency. You're never going to be satisfied. And even if you are, it's not going to actually fix the problem. And when men don't fix their problems, women pay the biggest price. And their children too. Not just their wives, because maybe they aren't married. Their sister, their mother, maybe even grandma will take care of their daughters. Some woman in these men's life is going to clean everything up for us. Because that's what we do. We got to stop. So of course the dad's like, well, Jack Miller's got about blah, blah, blah. No, you're still not good enough, son. Well, Jack's not here, is he? And he's so mad at daddy, he goes and gets on this tractor, starts being crazy, causes a scene, and she's all like, oh, there he is again. Well, that's my man. For a second, she thinks, you know, maybe I shouldn't go save him. Let him do his thing and clean up his own mess. And then her own family, I think it's her mom, is like, you should go down there. <laughs> Go save him, June. And she's all like, Mama, he's messed up. I don't want to go down. She's, she's got some sense in her. But, you know, this is why even when you are trying to not enable King Baby, you've always got a woman who has not decentered men being like, No, go enable him. Enable him. Go. She's like, I'm not going down there, okay? If I go. And she's like, Shh, you're already down there. <laughs> Honey, go on, get. Go, go, go save your man. And then the little worthless dad back there is like, mm-hmm. So, you know, he's in the water with this, like, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Any man that you feel sorry for and a lot of pity for, don't date him. That man will ruin your life. Pity is not a foundation of love. But especially the codependent types, the chronic ones, that's literally what we think love is. Again, why do you think Belle hooked up with the Beast? Felt sorry for that loser. His only friends were teapots and candlesticks. Also, she was, you know, like, <laughs> captive. What choice did she have, really? So he ends up, guess what? Drunk again. When men say this, believe them. You should have left me. <laughs> Don't fall for this trick, okay? This is him manipulating you. You should have left me. I'm not good enough. This is what they always say. I'm not good enough for you. Believe them. 
believe them. This is like the only time he's not lying. <laughs> if this is how you look at the man that you love consistently, like disappointment, pity, and just this, that's not love. That's probably limerence or codependency or some combination of the two. But then she like ropes in her whole family to like, you know, <laughs> shoot at anyone who comes to, to bring him some drugs. Again, do not be a man's little personal security officer. You are, are not a man's police officer. His nurse, his purse, his therapist, or any of the rest. And definitely not his mom. It's so funny as men are like, I'm your protector. But this is like, this is what they want. They want us to protect them. I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> He's like, here we go. You're an angel. You're an angel, June. Angel is just another form of martyr. I'd be nothing without you. You're my rock. You're an angel. Let's see, what else do they say? I need you. All those things are not compliments. Those are them saying, I will literally implode without you. Therefore, I will never show up for you as a partner. Only a dead weight that has to be taken care of. And we're like, oh, we're his rock. You're an angel. No, I'm not. But you've been here with me. Poor old me. He's like, no, I had a friend who needed help. June, wake up. That's not your friend. Cause you don't, I don't fork my friend. Once you're forking him, he's not your friend anymore. Because y'all have no commitment. You give, he takes, and you're forking him. None of his, he doesn't have any friends, but if he had any friends, they would never do this. So you can tell yourself that you're his friend. You're his little special friend. But no, you are literally his enabler. I've done so many bad things. Yeah, you have. But he says this because he wants her to say, no, you're not so bad. Don't, don't, he is baiting her. Th these men will do this all the time. I'm so bad. No, you're not. What's she supposed to say? Yeah, you are bad. You suck. No, he's saying this so she'll be like, no, you're not good. You've done a few bad things. No, he's done a lot. <laughs> a lot. Dad, it was right. Could have been me on that saw. Here we go. Call back. Call back. Everything is about how his brother was good and he's bad. And all the bad things he does is because of that saw and his dad. Not because he actually is a grown adult who's responsible for his own actions. It's the saw. Jack was good. He would have done so many good things. This is all self-pity. All self-pity. Don't fall for this. This is not him being vulnerable. This is men using vulnerability and tears to manipulate the crap out of us. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't stop tapping this. Hey, what have I done? He's basically like, tell me. Tell me what I've done that's amazing. Come on, come on, come on. I just heard everybody I know. Well, and that's the truth. That's the most, the truest thing you've said in this whole movie, bro. I don't hurt you. I'm nothing. Not nothing. You're not nothing. Look, I'm not saying that People don't do this in relationships. We all need encouragement. We all need pep talk. But I promise you, she's the one doing the pep talks and he's the one in the self-pity part. And that's probably their dynamic all the time. Because what does she finally give him? Exactly what he wants. You're a good man. You're a nice guy. You're not like those other bad men. You're a good man. That's all he wanted to hear. And God has given you a second chance to make things right, John. This is your chance, honey. Now, if this man actually took any of this seriously, it would have actually maybe uh, pulled on my little heartstring, but it didn't. Next thing you know, this man's proposing to her on a bus. He's like, I had a bad dream. Will you marry me? She's like, except for the honeymoon, have you thought about this? Have you thought about what you're actually asking me? Because you've only been clean for six months. Don't ever date a man who's only been clean for six months. That is not enough time for him to go through enough stuff to see if he actually has a stable sobriety. And don't be dating any of these men in any of these recovery groups. But that's another video. Like, I have thought about it. That's all I've ever thought about. Well, how's it gonna work, John? What about my kids? What about your kids? Dad won't even look at me. See, I didn't even realize that that was going on. Uh, if, if your in-laws hate you before you even get married, you're in for a long ride. Okay, what he says is so classic. Don't ever believe men when they say this. Dude, that stuff will all work itself out. I talk about this all the time. If a, if a man lives in another country and he tries to convince you to uproot your entire life and go live in his world with his culture, his language, his family, and you're like, I don't know, I'm kind of concerned about how I'm going to get a job, how I'm going to pay the language, my da, 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 and he's like, it'll work itself out. Stop overthinking it. 
don't believe these men. Ne it never just works itself out. And they say this all the time. They make you feel stupid for being concerned about very legitimate things. Like financial security. Wrapped in another country. Not being able to leave it without your kids or his kidnap. All kinds of things. <laughs> and I mean, again, I like that she talks back to him. But then she always ends up giving in. <laughs> so what's it? Why? She's like, oh, you think it's going to work itself out, huh? He's like, what do you mean? And then he does this classic thing. This is straight out of the notebook. If you haven't seen my breakdown of the notebook, please go give it a watch. It's one of my favorite ones ever. Because this is the same crap that Noah pulled on Allie to get her to marry a hobo who just fights with her all the time instead of a man who treated her really well and was financially secure. He's like, you're just scared. Of being in love. You're scared of losing control. Oh, control. Like that controlling fuck of a wife of yours. I don't ever listen to men when they talk about control. They're the ones obsessed with control. Not us. I get it. We can be controlling. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying the way these men twist, <laughs> project everything. What are you even talking about, bro? And you know what, June Carter? I think you're scared of living in my big fat shadows. Cool. Insult her in your marriage proposal. <laughs> okay. Is that your problem? She's like, oh, really? Yeah. My problem is it's 2 a.m. Am I on a tour bus with eight stinking men? And you just gave me the worst, least romantic proposal ever, brah. And you also did it because you said you had a bad dream. Like, seriously, this, like, what were you doing? But you know what? I actually just read this man proposed to her 30 times. I literally just did that google search right before this scene so uh yeah this dude seems like he was the one obsessed i think his wife uh never really dealt with her own codependency because i get why she hated june but it seems like this man was the one who was really obsessed i don't know the jury's still out but again we're gonna go over some stuff that his wife said as soon as i'm done with these last few scenes but after she literally schools him the how like to not propose <laughs> to her on a bus blah 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 murder me Bro, do you listen? That's the last time I'm asking. Yeah, I'll believe it. Okay. Threaten me. He's like, well, good. Like, the, this is seriously Allie and Noah all over again. Minus the addiction. All y'all do is fight. God, I can't believe how much I hate the notebook. Ooh. If y'all want me to do that one again, I will. And do a long video because that seriously is the, one of the worst love stories of all time that did such a number on women for a long time. Still does. Seriously. Okay. Focus, Melanie. So then they go out and sing this song. And he's all like, hey, you want to marry me? And she's like, can we please sing the song? So here he is again. You let this man get away with it. And you think he's going to change. And bro's doing it again. And, and it's even worse. He's like, hey, folks. This is another reason why public uh, proposals, unless y that man knows that that's what you actually want, and you have discussed marriage before, a public proposal is a huge red flag. Because that's all about him being like, look at me, I did this thing, and everyone, and the entire public, I don't know, like, when you're on a jumbotron, and there's tens of thousands of people being like, yes, yes, how are you gonna say no, right? How in the hell is she supposed to say no in this scenario, you jerk? Sorry, folks, but, uh, I just can't sing this song anymore unless she marries me. She's like, Ugh. I'd just be lying. He's like, come on, please stop. Please stop. Let's just sing that other song. He's like, no, you got me all revved up. It's your fault. I'm doing this. I asked you 40 different ways. Okay, I read it was 30, but whatever. Same thing. It's a lot. She's like, please sing. And here he goes again. I know I did a lot of things that were bad and I'm a bad boy. I hurt you. But I promise I'll never do that again. <laughs> Don't believe him, June. Don't believe him. It's only does a lie. I only want to take care of you. What? I only want to take care of you, even though our whole relationship is literally you taking care of me. But all I want to do is take care of you. Do not believe me. <laughs> Don't believe this. He has literally never shown a nurturing bone in his body. He's never done anything to take care of her. Other than that one time, he's like, you got a good voice. Right before he introduced her to his children and got his wife pissed at her. So, oh my God, I hate him. I want to take care of you. I want to be a provider and protect Provider of stress and financial insecurity and autoimmune diseases and protector of my ego and image and lifestyle. Look at this. He does that stupid Dutch boy. I will never leave you like a Dutch boy with your finger in the damn. Bro, that's literally all you do. Here's the thing. She's replaceable. She doesn't stick a finger in the damn someone else will. These men will always find a finger for their damn. I hate this metaphor. You're my best friend. Well, you suck as a friend, bro. Murmur. Okay. <laughs> 
voila, the end, the happy end. But it's not so happy because he was in and out of recovery for a long time. Even though he stayed allegedly sober for seven years after their kid was born. You know, the little prince that he favored over his daughter. He started using and drinking again. What about the... Damn, what about taking care of her? The cycle of being in and out of addiction would continue for years. It may not have helped. Okay, I, this is new. That June was reportedly a compulsive shopper and a prescription pill popper herself. Well, that makes sense now. That's what her son said. Her son said their 35 year marriage was a tumultuous relationship, but will also one of unconditional love. Um, that's not what love is. Love is not supposed to be unconditional between two adults. This? is codependency and all kinds of messed up stuff, but that is not love. And tumultuous is a really nice way of saying abusive and violent. They didn't give up on each other. They accepted each other. Tell, you, you should not accept this. You should not accept this. To avoid this video being too long, I'm actually gonna add my last, the final act about Johnny Cash's real life and his wife's real life. Compare it to the movie because it's so much work. It deserves its own video. So please comment, like, share, and set your notifications so you don't miss part two. I'll follow up with that very shortly. If not today, then in the next couple days. Because believe it or not, the true story is even worse. And Hollywood was like, well, man, we like a love story of a toxic addict man. Just wanted love. Thanks for being here and stay tuned.